I'll just leave it at that. Okay. So, Muna, you are Zambian. You have seen what has been happening over the past few weeks. There's been so much excitement about Zambia among every African. So tell us more. What do you think is okay. the impact of the election of Haka and Hichilem as president in Zambia? Uh, uh, we have been observing what has been happening, especially with regards to uh, our platform, because uh, we created the Z Corner um incorporated uh, media in 2015 and during this time this was a transition of uh you know uh the patriotic front when we had uh, the death of michael sata so for us this has been a very personal journey because we have been able uh to sort of uh, document pretty much everything that was happening in terms of uh, the pf government so with regards to the recent uh, victory that uh, upnd president uh, under the leadership of uh, president haka in the a lot of zambians are very satisfied they're very uh you know happy that there is actually uh democratic progress because what we recently saw with regards to the pf was uh, a situation where we were starting to have uh uh, dictatorial tendencies. Uh, you know, we saw a lot of things like the Public Order Act get enforced, and there was like a lot of, uh, you know, uh, there wasn't a lot of freedom, if I can put it that way. So with regards to this, the Zambian people are very much happy. A lot of people are satisfied. There's actually a breath of fresh air, and uh, especially with the youths, because the youths uh, are the majority of Zambians, and uh, they are very happy, they are very overwhelmed due to the fact that uh, Haka in the Hichilema is highly regarded, especially from a business pers uh, perspective. And right now in Zambia, we are looking for economic emancipation, and uh, President Haka in the Hichilema is definitely uh, the right man for this particular job, and uh, he deserves the win because he's been in opposition for over 20 years. So, uh, you know, Zambians are very, very happy. Like, the majority of Zambians are very satisfied. Okay, so please tell me a bit more about Z Corner. What is Z Corner? Who is audience? All right, okay, so uh, Z Corner is uh, an online uh, media platform. We basically curate um, what is happening in Zambia, and uh, we just, uh, you know, pretty much uh, get the most interesting parts. Uh, of the news and everything that is trendy. So over the past few years, we've been concentrating on uh, politics and, uh, you know, uh, relevant issues because these are the issues that have been affecting the youth. So basically, we have been targeting uh, our, our demographics are basically, you know, Zambians, Africans who are interested in Zambia. And uh, our, our age group is from around uh, 18 to about 65. So our target audience is basically, you know, people who love uh, Zambia and everything uh, Zambia has to offer. Okay, I'm going to come back to you. I just want to introduce Mr. Midzi. Mr. Midzi, you saw what has happened in Zambia. We talked briefly about it last week. What do you think? I want to introduce the topic of the commanders. What do you think about the sudden and abrupt firing of the top brass in the army, in the air force, in the police in one day? Is that usual? Uh, I would want to... What happens in Zambia, it uh, affects uh, Zimbabwe in some way. Uh, we also have, uh, we took it upon ourselves as a political party, the Zimbabwe People's Action Party, uh, to deliberate on the firing of those generals or the army officers, uh, whoever they are. Uh, as a political party, if we were the political party uh, that is running Zambia today, that of President Akainda Ajlema, we were going to take... Uh, every general or army officer, regardless of whatever they did, for cultural exchange in countries that we believe as the democracy that we want, can uh, correct the mistakes of that army like the UK, uh, USA, we would take them there so that they can uh, have cultural exchange or uh, some kind of education so that if there were some deficiencies in their delivery of their duties, then they would be corrected. That is what we would have done uh, if we were uh, the party running uh, Zambia today. Because we understand the army is deployed by the commander-in-chief who at that time uh, was uh, uh, President Lungu. I'm not his admirer, but uh, the people of Zambia 
including the army themselves, they voted him out because maybe he deployed the army and Zambians do not want the army in the streets. So he was removed already, he was fired. So these generals, uh, there is a lot into it. I think my, my brother from Zambia will give us more, but we'll get into it. But as a party, if we were running Zambia, we wouldn't timber with the democratic institutions like the army. Those are national institutions. They're not personal institutions. When I get in as a, a commander-in-chief, I can only correct their behavior and their culture so that it suits the democrats that I want to see. But if I come as if I'm being, uh, I'm doing some re, uh, redistribution, uh, you know, uh, you know, fight back something like both to us uh, external ob observers, we see it as a fight back to some generals who may have been uh, displaying that they are on the side of uh, the the the, the uh, Mr. Lunku. That's what we see, but and we can, we can that cannot take be taken away from us. But to those in Zambia, maybe they put another way they are seeing it, which my brother here is going to educate us on. Okay, so Muna. Uh, for those who are joining us now, Muna is running a platform called Z Corner, and he's Zambia. He's got a very big following in Zambia. And the reason why I want to ask you about the military is because we in Zimbabwe don't know much about the Zambian military. So right. take us through the Zambian military, the guys who were fired, right? the, the commanders and all that, who are they? Okay, so um, basically the, the normal procedure with regards to Zambian politics and Zambian culture is uh, every time we have uh, a newly elected president, they usually set up their own uh, cabinet. They, there is, uh, uh, you know, a situation where everything is sort of uh, started uh, afresh and uh, there is... Uh, just, uh, you know, employing of uh, new people and basically a new team. So in Zambia, this is very common uh, practice because what usually happens is, uh, you know, the previous uh, people are obviously loyal to uh, the previous president. So when a new president comes in, it's very common practice in Zambia ever since uh, independence, ever since, uh, you know, 1991, this has been normal practice. So to us, we don't even see anything uh, sinister about it. And uh, obviously, Mr. You know, President Haka in the Hitchlam is uh, justified uh, to do this, uh, you know, because uh, uh, according to what was happening during uh, elections, during campaigns, he wasn't really uh, free to move around. So obviously, he wouldn't uh, trust, uh, you know, the the the, the previous uh, commanders and the army and uh, the entire service because these were obviously not really uh, in good terms with him. So he obviously needs to come up with his own people who he trusts so that they can work uh, diligently well together. So to us, uh, it's it's not it's, it's nothing personal. It just comes with the job. You know, when a new uh, president comes in, he has to appoint his new cabinet. He has to, uh, you know, uh, come up with his own team. So that includes the army, the air force, uh, the correctional services, and just a lot of, uh, you know, different uh, institutions and organizations as well. Okay, so let's look at the new people that were put in. Right. Uh, so let's start in the, in the army. Who, who, who was put in the army? All right, so with regards to the army, uh, we have uh, Mr. Dennis uh, Sitali Alibuzi. He's the new army commander. We also have a deputy commander, Jeffrey Chongo Zwele. The ZAF commander is uh, Colin Barry. Uh, who, you know, gathered like a lot of uh, popularity because, uh, you know, he's a Zambian born and bred, but he's just got like, uh, you know, a Scottish uh, uh, heritage as well. He's both Zambian and, uh, you know, Scottish, but he's Zambian. So he he, he became very popular recently and uh, there was some, some sort of a debate uh, with regards to his appointment. But, uh, you know, Zambians accept everybody. One Zambia, one nation, regardless of color, ethnicity, it doesn't really matter. So, you know, that's uh, already a story which has been flushed away. Then with regards to the deputy uh, Zambia Air Force uh, commander, that is obviously Mr. Oscar Nuni. Uh, the ZNS commander is uh, Mr. Patrick Solochi. Z ZNS uh, deputy Ruben Mwewa. Uh, Inspector General is Mr. Remy Kajova. The Deputy Inspector General is Mr. Muna Muyambango. Uh, the Deputy Inspector General is uh, Doris Chiwombe. And, uh, you know, we recently had another appointment today. I think that was uh, the correctional 
um, officer, I think the head of the Zambia National Correctional Services. So he was recently, uh, you know, changed uh, today. So unfortunately, I do not have the name. So when you look at this particular structure and the team, it's a very well balanced, uh, you know, sort of uh, team with regards to all the people who were employed. Because, you know, in Zambia, there's this uh, tribal uh, sort of talk. So when it comes to the people who got appointed, right, everybody in Zambia with regards to the tribes, every, everybody is satisfied. And uh, this is one of the reasons why President uh, Hakainde Hichilema is taking a little bit longer because he's just trying to obviously, I'm, of course, I'm assuming. And by the way, I'm not really speaking on behalf of UPND or State House. This is just basically my own speculation. So, uh, you know. Uh, I really think that one of the reasons why uh, President Haka in the Hichlema is taking a little bit longer to come up with his uh, team and appoint new cabinet ministers is because he wants to really have a very good tribal balance because, you know, a lot of people assume that uh, since he's Tonga, he's obviously tribal. So for him, he's, even a, he's in a very, uh, you know, uh, good predicament there when it comes to balancing up the tribes. So this is one of the reasons why a lot of people are beginning to get anxious because he's taking too long. The only reason I assume he's taking long uh, is because he needs to balance up uh, with regards to the tribes so that everybody's satisfied and there isn't any name calling. Okay. Let's go to the point that Mr. Mitzi raised. Right that firing everyone or the leadership team is a mistake. Instead, he should have taken these generals or commanders for orientation in different countries. Was that considered, is that something that is being said in Zambia? Uh, so it, it's, um, it's not really firing them. A lot of them are going to be redeployed. A lot of them are going to be sent to various, uh, you know, posts. So it's not, uh, you know, something that was done out of malice. You know, so there's obviously going to be redeployment. There's going to be other appointments as well. So th those people are obviously still going to have their jobs. It's just that uh, these particular services that they were offering are going to be given to other people. And moreover, everybody needs to have uh, a fair chance. Everybody has to have their own time as well because these people have actually, uh, you know, served Zambia diligently and they've done their work. So, you know, it's time for other people as well. Okay, but I saw them, especially the military, Right. Brutally beating up UPND supporters. That's not diligently saving the country. So there's right. bad blood between UPND and the guys who are fired. Right. So with regards to those details, right, you know, like there's uh, uh, sensitive issues. It's very hard to like, uh, you know, uh, really give the defined details with regards to who was being beaten, whether it was a cadre, was a UPND cadre. That's obviously going to be for the cops to handle. But yes, there were inc uh, incidences where you know uh, people were talking about uh, police brutality. You know, there were several cases. However, I'm not really too sure whether those were specifically targeted as UPND cadres. And there has always been rivalry uh, between uh, you know PF cadres and uh, UP. PND cadres and you know people in Zambia weren't really free to sort of uh, even put on the color red because they were assumed to be UPND cadres. So with regards to that, right, we can't really blame uh, you know the army and saying they were specifically doing it because sometimes we had cadres uh, putting on police uniform and all that stuff. So with regards to the the army and the Zambian police specifically doing that, I wouldn't really you know uh, comment on that because I don't really have uh, su uh, sufficient information. Uh, you know, with regards to that. Okay, I want to go back to Mr. Midzi. And, and I, I think, Mr. Midzi, I want to give you your last word so that I can conclude here with um, with Muna. You saw Chamisa, the president of the MDC Alliance in Zambia. And he was very close to, to President Haka in the Hichilema. And it was even hugging the president at the inauguration. What was your view in a diplomatic protocol? Was that correct? Uh, I think uh, people need to go back to the founding values of Africa, uh, the way it was set up by uh, Julius Nyerere, uh, Kenneth Kaunda, um, Samara Michelle, and uh, many other people we also used to you know they say history it teaches us it helps us to be able to predict the future um from the 
side of the opposition in Zimbabwe, we were happy to see the opposition, a fellow opposition party, being in, uh, invited to Zambia to attend the inauguration of uh, uh, President Yakainde Ichlema. Uh, we are happy with that. But uh, I'm not sure about on the security aspect of that event, because Africa, you know, our Southern Africa is the is a, 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 a region that had a lot of blood being shed. You know, before you do such a thing, you need to be very serious about the security that you offer to the people. We had issues like Jonas Savimbi and Agostino Neto in Angola. Would you simply just invite such people to, 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 a, to a platform without checking as critical about the security? Uh, we have the situation in Zimbabwe, which is very polar, which we all know that there is a, a bit of bad blood between uh, uh, President Idi Mnangagwa and President uh, Nelson Chamisa of uh, the MDC. Um, South Africa is another ball game. Uh, we also had a situation in Mozambique. Uh, would you invite um, uh, Samara Machel and uh, you know the leader of the Rinamo? I think uh, knowing the regional dynamics would you have helped Mr. Akainde Ichilema, but if he was sure of the security of those people who were coming, like I saw in Kenya, he did very well. He, he brought uh, uh, Railamolo Odinga and uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta. That was good because those people are in good terms. They did the handshake. Did he bring uh, Deputy President William Ruto? No, he didn't. Because doing that, uh, you know, these people are so sneaky that they can do something you know, in a blink of an eye. So uh, the security aspect of it, I didn't think it was observed very well by President HH. And I think he need to do well on the issue of regional security and regional dynamics. Because what affects Mozambique, Rinamo versus uh, 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 Frelimo, what affects South Africa, ANC versus ANC itself, what affects Zimbabwe, sometimes we find it's ZANPF versus ZANPF itself, Zambia versus MDC is different from the issue in Botswana. There is nothing, there is no blood being shed in Botswana. There is no blood being shed in Zambia. Uh, there are some countries we, when we invite their leaders, we have to be very serious about security. Countries like Kenya, countries like Mozambique, countries like Zimbabwe, Angola, those countries can give you headaches and uh, things can happen in a blink of an eye. And in future, I believe. Uh, President HH should be serious about uh, uh, security and intelligence. It's a critical component in a region or in Africa. Okay. So, Muna, I, I want to come to you. If you look at the president, Akainde Ichlema, right. is he the kind of person that can change from his principal position and get influenced by regional dynamics. For example, what Mr. Mintz is saying. Right. Is he not a firm principled person? Oh, on that one, I can, you know, confidently say that uh, our president, uh, President Haka in the Hichlema, is a very principled man. He's a man that really pre-calculates everything. And uh, we have full confidence that he is going to do for Zambia and for the region what is necessary and uh, required. So with regards to, you know, his, uh, principle and, uh, his principles and staying grounded, I'm very, very confident that he is going to do and, and uh, put the people's uh, interest. He's a very uh, principled man. So I don't really think he's going to derail uh, from his objective because if you look at his, uh, you know, victory, he's been working on this for a very long period of time. So he really understands what the people expect of him. And this is not only about Zambia, because, you know, uh, President Haka in the Hichilema's uh, background is obviously that of, uh, you know, a cattle herd man. And, uh, when, uh, you know, people who uh, used to uh, herd cattle while growing up, these are very principled people who've got heart for 
each and every uh, you know, cow out there. So these are the people who are, who've got very strong principles, and uh, he's obviously run his businesses like this as well. If you talk about the UPND team, uh, even before he won the the elections, everybody was uh, you know uh, well taken care of, and he still remained uh, you know to the core of his principles. So I do not think anything is going to derail him, and this is one of the reasons why he's very calculated when it comes to doing things. So I really believe he's going to add a lot of value, not only to Zambia, but, you know, the neighboring countries, uh, you know, such as Zimbabwe, because we obviously need Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Namibia, uh, and all these uh, surrounding countries to do very well. We need the Southern uh, African region to be very strong. And I really think uh, President uh, Hichilema is going to do a very recommendable job. And uh, we're going to be able to, like, uh, help one another with regards uh, to everything, security-wise, uh, financial-wise. He's a very good, strong candidate. I really think he's going to do a very due diligent diligent job. Okay, Mr. Mizi, is there anything else you want to say before I let you out of the studio? Uh, what I want to say, Mr. Gambakwe, is uh, also uh, for the uh, for my friend from Zambia, I'm still coming on the issue of the firing of the army commanders. Right. We want a strong Zambian army. I don't know if we can get a strong Zambian army when we fire a generals who should behave, who should be designing the army, you know, every other term, point number one. Point number two, we have not in the region been able to see the strength of the Zambian army because they have not played the ball anywhere like the mighty Chipolo Polo we know who play the game, the ball around Africa and win the Nations Cup. But the Zambian army, there is Cabo Delgado burning in Mozambique. We haven't seen them there. DRC burnt uh, in 1998. We didn't see them there. Uh, there are a lot of other areas. Uh, the Zambian army has not kicked the, the ball. So we have not seen its strength. And we are worried that with this kind of uh, tempering with the army, I don't think it will give us a strong Zambian army uh, where the army officers are really doing the real training. You know, the Zimbabwe army, whenever there is anything in Mozambique, they are there before anything is said, you know, things like that. We want a strong uh, army in the, in the region so that we can uh, match the world. But... Uh, I'm not sure how the Zambian army is trained. I'm not sure how to rate it because they have not kicked the ball since uh, independent. Maybe my friend from Zambia can help on that. I think President HH and the Zambian people should do, uh, start to think serious about the strength of this national institution called the Zambian army. Uh, I, I think our, our friend from Zambia here can help us on that, but maybe I don't know my statistics or information about the Zambian army, but I haven't seen them kicking the ball. All right. Okay. So uh, with regards to uh, President Hichilema's uh, choices, these are the people who were uh, selected based on merit. And uh, this is one of the uh, characteristics that uh, he has been uh, pushing because he wants people this time around to be chosen based on their capabilities. And we are trying to have a, mer a meritocratic country. So based on the appointments that he made, uh, according to him and his team, right, they obviously selected the best candidates. Of course, even if we get to have new appointments, it doesn't really mean that uh, our efficiency is going to be uh, altered or changed in any way because all these people are fully capable of, uh, you know, performing their job. So with regards to the past, uh, you know, Zambia is inactive, in inactivity in the region or lack thereof. Uh, you know, I can't really comment on that because I don't really have, uh, you know, specific juris jur jurisdictions to talk about those particular activities. Uh, but I really believe believe that, uh, you know, our army is uh, a very strong one. And when it comes to uh, protecting uh, our country and our region, we are definitely uh, going to do what is necessary. And uh, with regards, uh, you know, to being very influential in the region, right? Uh, of course, we don't want to step on other people's uh, toes and we don't want to, you know, uh, we're not the in your face uh, type of people and that's not really our culture. But when it comes to, uh, you know, our borders and uh, doing what we need to do in, in order for the people 
uh, to be uh, protected. I think the army has been doing a great job and I think it's going to uh, be more very uh, active, of course, without stepping on anybody's uh, toes. So with regards to the intricate details, I can't really talk about that because I don't have the jurisdictions, but I really believe uh, President Hakainde Hichilema has really chosen uh, people who are very capable of, uh, you know, doing what is best for Zambia and the Southern African region and uh, Africa uh, as a whole. Right, Mr. Midzi, unfortunately, I've got very little time today, and I really appreciate everything that you've done for us, joining us today and introducing me to Muna. Uh, Muna, please uh, say goodbye to Mr. Midzi, and we'll talk to him very, very, very soon. All right. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Midzi. And uh, hopefully we're going to have another brilliant conversation. It's always very good to always uh, exchange ideas and, uh, you know, just talk about the Southern African region because we need to have strong ties. We need to be interested in what is happening uh, in uh, our neighboring countries. And this is one of the reasons why I'm very uh, happy to be alive and uh, witness, uh, you know, where you have this particular platform as Zimbabweans, you're talking about what is happening in Zambia. So we need to actually look out for one another. We need to trade with each other. We need to have business and conduct business uh, businesses among us ourselves. So to me, it's really a blessing. And I'm so happy, so proud, and I'm so humble to be part of this amazing uh, platform. And uh, thank you for inviting me. So Mr. Midzi, I hope to have another brilliant conversation with you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Muna. Uh, I, I, we, I really enjoyed uh, talking to you, and it's always good to have information uh, which is coming from the source. Like uh, you, you have been following what is happening in Zambia, and uh, you have been in the thick of things. And it's very good to have such a discussion where we have you balancing the issues and uh, also schooling us and educating us about what is happening in Zambia. And then regionally, we can always share ideas and build a strong CEDIC and a strong Africa. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. Cheers, Mr. Midzi. We'll talk again on Wednesday next week. Thank you very much, Mr. Gambagwe. Thanks for having us on your platform. Right, so Muna, I think uh, let's conclude here with the point that we made. The point on the economy yes. of Zambia. Yes. The economy of Zambia is in trouble. Right. The, the kwacha collapsed under Lungu right. on the last bit there from January it really collapsed and the debt in Zambia is very, very high. Unemployment, very high. Food prices, very high. When uh, the new president came in, there was a sudden improvement. What is the game plan going forward? Okay, so uh, basically when uh, people were, especially the market, uh, you know, uh, make, uh, makers and uh, spectators, uh, uh, got wind of the fact that uh, there's a high probability of uh, President uh, Hichilema winning, right? We obviously saw the markets uh, react. This is one of the reasons why we saw a blow off top because uh, at its highest, uh, you know, depreciation level, the price of uh, the kwacha against the dollar was trading at uh, $23. And uh, in anticipation of uh, Hakai and the Hichilema's victory, we saw a dramatic uh, appreciation of the kwacha, which is obviously alluding to the fact that, uh, you know, market spectators out there are definitely anticipating a turnaround with regards to the economy doing very well. With regards to the kwacha appreciating, right, we also saw other factors as well, uh, showing the confidence in President uh, Hichlema's, uh, uh, you know, uh, governance. We saw the the bonds are uh, doing very well. We saw a spike in the in the number of bonds which are actually being acquired, and this is one of the reasons why we are obviously seeing these uh, economic indicators. Even without him actually uh, beginning to like uh, fully impose uh, his new uh, you know services and applications with regards to making a lot of uh, uh, economic uh, turnarounds. But I really believe uh, there's going to be more and more improvements. One of the, you know, the most important uh, hurdles that we have is obviously getting to dismantle the public debt that was uh, overly uh, accumulated during, uh, you know, the rule of the patriotic front, like over the past uh, 10 years, ever since they got in, in, in power, you know, since 2011, we saw a very, uh, you know, dramatic rise in terms of uh, Zambia's external debt. So owing to the fact that uh, President uh, Hichilema is uh, a very business 
uh, savvy person and uh, he's a very great economist. I'm sure he's got uh, a lot of, uh, you know, tricks that he's going to pull out of his sleeve. And uh, the first one of the first things that he did was uh, appoint the finance minister and uh, the finance minister that we currently have. He is a very uh, experienced person and uh, he's very qualified. He was actually uh, one of the he was the one of the finance ministers uh, uh, during the MMD era. And uh, as you know, in 2001, right, Zambia had a lot of uh, issues with regards to private, uh, privatization of uh, different, uh, you know, mines and other stuff. So Zambia was in a complete mess, but the MMD were able to turn around and uh, reduce the debt. So uh, he, President uh, Hichilema has had one of the best minds and he is leading the finance ministry. So we obviously expect Zambia to have a huge turnaround. But at this particular moment, uh, we are going to give him time because uh, a lot of the things that are beginning to happen in Zambia, these were obviously done the, by the patriotic front. So with regards to President uh, Haka in the Hichilema's hand, dealing with uh, and uh, solving a lot of uh, issues, right? It's obviously going to have an effect. Like, let's say, for example, nine months from now, one year from now, this is when we're going to see a huge turnaround and the shift. So with regards to uh, creating jobs, uh, President Hichilema has got uh, an immaculate plan. And by the way, uh, President uh, Hichilema and the UPND is joined by the UPND Alliance. This is uh, a group of political parties that decided to join hands with the UPND and uh, build a stronger opposition. And uh, fortunately, they were very victorious. So the UPND Alliance uh, is obviously very capable of uh, delivering and just adding value and uh, making sure that we have an economic turnaround. So with regards to that, it's just a matter of time. President Hichilema is going to do a very good job with regards to all the sectors. You know, we've got the mining sector, which is obviously going to be handled diligently because on the UPND Alliance, we have a very uh, prominent person who's got a lot of experience with, with regards to uh, the mining uh, sector. Uh, Mr. Charles uh, Milupi, he's a very, very business savvy person. He's part of the UPND Alliance. We also have uh, prominent people such as, uh, you know, Kevin Vuadia Fuve. These are the people who have been very, uh, you know, crucial and instrumental with regards to a lot of uh, develop developmental activities. So no doubt Zambia in a matter of time is going to be uh, able to revive itself. And uh, hopefully we're going to be able to have an impact on uh, Zimbabwe as well. Okay. I think let's go a bit deeper then. Right. Besides copper, right. agriculture, right. Uh, retail sector, what else is there in Zambia? What, what can grow that economy? Uh, value, uh, well, with regards to minerals, right, Zambia is endowed and uh, blessed with a lot of uh, minerals. Uh, you know, we recently discovered gold on the northern part of Zambia, uh, you know, in uh, Solwezi and the Kasempa area. This is the northern part of uh, Zambia. So uh, obviously uh, there have been licenses which have been given, but at this particular moment, right, we just haven't fully uh, gone into gold production at this particular moment. Well, we have to some exit, but we have to some extent, but not to the level where, for example, copper uh, and Zambia sort of uh, intertwine and go together, you know. So we obviously need uh, to dive deep into more uh, exploration of uh, such minerals. And then we're also blessed with a lot of, uh, you know, cobalt, manganese. And right now, as you know, uh, the world is gravitating towards uh, electrical vehicles and just, uh, you know, safer emissions of energy. So this is one of the reasons why the UPND Alliance is uh, very adamant about uh, value addition. So with regards to the copper that we produce, right, uh, they, they talked about uh, kind of setting up factories, which are not only going to export raw copper, because this is where Zambia loses out for the most part, right? We're going to be adding value, you know, where we have uh, companies such as... Um, I've, I've forgotten the name, is responsible for more value addition to copper. So we can, you know, produce copper wires, even copper bullets, because a long time ago, Zambia used to uh, produce uh, copper bullets as well. But in the recent past, we forgot about value addition. We were just exporting raw copper. So this time around, uh, Zambians are in full control. 
We're going to uh, take advantage of uh, the gold that was recently discovered, uh, the manganese, the cobalt, the copper. And then we, are, we also have uh, other regions in Zambia that have got, uh, you know, oil and uh, natural gas at this particular moment. It's still early stage because they're still exploring and they're still weighing, uh, you know, all the factors. But we have uh, a lot of opportunities. And then we also have uh, uh, other parts of Zambia, such as the Western province, which is uh, close to the, uh, you know, diamond belt. I'm sure you already know that uh, Angola is uh, known for diamond producing as well. So uh, the western part of Zambia is endowed with uh, gold. But at this particular moment, right, we, uh, we are still in early stages. You know, we just need to uh, fully exploit uh, these minerals and take advantage of, uh, of them. And this is one of the reasons why we're so happy and so blessed that we have a person who was able to turn his life around. Uh, President Hichilema is one of the richest uh, people in Zambia, and he's not really money hungry. That's not something that really drives him. He's a person who uh, works based on principle. And uh, with regards to what recently happened, right, I'm sure you heard that uh, he bought his own vehicle and he refused to use uh, state uh, property because he has his own money. He bought his own vehicle. So these are the virtues that uh, President Hichilema possesses, and I really believe he's not really going going to, uh, you know, be greedy and uh, do what the rest uh, have done. So with regards to economic emancipation, I think this is the drawing board. This is the beginning of the very best for Zambia, because uh, since 1964, right, Zambia has been in a period where we're trying to establish ourselves and we're trying to, you know, know who we are and know our capabilities. And uh, obviously, we saw a lot of uh, different transitioning phases uh, from uh, President uh, Kaunda to Chiluba, then uh, Mwanawasa Rupia Banda. So during all these phases, right, we were just trying to get our footing right in the door where we weren't really, uh, you know, we, we didn't really have that character that had uh, the eat factor. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of uh, people in Zambia are very proud of, uh, you know, Haka in the Hichilema. Of course, I'm not really trying to overpraise him, but due to the fact that he's had resilience for the past 20 years, I mean, UPND has been in opposition for a very long period of time. He was brutally, uh, brutally, uh, you know, opposed and it was very unfair for him, but he's one person who never gave up. He just kept on persisting and he just kept on pushing on and on and on. So due to the fact that he understands that it really took him a very long period of time to uh, reach this pedestal, I'm really sure. Uh, you know, his team uh, and uh, himself, you know, these are the people who are going to make sure that they really deliver. And the UPND also has a lot of pressure because Zambians have got huge expectation for President H uh, Haka in the Hitchlem and the UPND alliance. So this is one of the reasons why they are taking their time and making sure that whenever they strike, they strike uh, the right uh, support and, the, and they do the right thing. So, you know, they understand that they do not really have time. And one thing about Zambians is, uh, especially the voters, voters right now are demanding a lot from the, you know, elected uh, leadership. Uh, you know, because uh, UNIP ruled Zambia for 27 years. Uh, MMD ruled uh, Zambia for about 21 years. PF only ruled Zambia for about 10 to 11 years. So as you can see, the tolerance of uh, incompetence with regards to Zambians is drastically declining. And this is one of the reasons why uh, President uh, Hichilema is really under pressure to deliver because he understands that the lifespan and the tolerance of Zambians is very, very uh, minimal. And due to the fact that he made a lot of uh, promises and people have got a, a lot of high expectation, he really needs to deliver. So this is one of the reasons he's obviously going to, you know, hit the road running. And uh, during the next five years, a lot of Zambians are going to hold him accountable. And uh, a lot of Zambians are going to make sure that, uh, you know, at least he does a lot of things that he didn't uh, achieve. And if he doesn't, there's obviously other contenders as well. You know, Zambians can literally switch like that. But if he does very well, then the UPND, the UPND alliance is obviously going to do very well. And uh, besides that, uh, we are really in, in a good space. <laughs> I'm very long-winded, so cut me off in case I need to slow down. <laughs> Look, pe people are enjoying what you're saying. And Zimbabweans, they were following the Zambian election like no one's right. business. I started following the campaign in January. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine, the, the, one of my favorite YouTubers from Zambia, she actually became 
a, a contestant for UPND. She left the UK right. to become a, a, a candidate for UPND. I hope she won. Right. But this is this is so inspiring for young people. What has happened in Zambia? Right. And I think you are properly explaining everything, and everyone is very happy with your answers. I think let's bring this to an end. If I wanted to come to Zambia, right. what would I have to do if I wanted to run my business in Zambia? Uh, if you want to run a business in Zambia, you need uh, to, first of all, register your company. You need to get the uh, needed uh, documents in order for you to start your registration. So you need to go to PACRA. Uh, you can actually Google this online, PACRA Zambia. You, you can nowadays you can even do it online so due to the fact that you're not zambian right there's going to be a specific uh you know uh, area where you need to fill in your credentials saying that you are uh a non-zambian and then you're going to be able to like uh understand uh, the needed instructions and all that stuff but i'm not really sure if uh you need to partner up with the zambian in order for you to like start your business or you can just solely uh, run your business as uh, a foreigner in Zambia. I need to clarify on that, but uh, there's adequate information online. So the, 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 the first things that you need to do is uh, you need to register your company under PACRA, and then you also need uh, to do your ZRA document. So the ZRA just simply means Zambia Revenue Authority because you need to sort of uh, uh, pay tax. So you need these two documents, Parker documents and the ZRA documents, and then some other, you know, minor details as well. You might be able to get from the Parker uh, website. So that's Parker, P-A-C-R-A. -A. Uh, just say Parker Zambia. Then it's going to take you to the website. It's going to give you all the information. So nowadays there's an electronic uh, way of uh, making the payment. So you can even start the process wherever you are. So setting up a business in Zambia is... Uh, something that you can uh, easily do uh, fairly easy and uh, it's not really uh, a complicated process okay but you know it's interesting what you just said i just went to the pakra website right i also went to the zambia revenue authority website right zambia seems to be very technical they have got a lot of technology was this done by lungu or who did this well, this is obviously done by, uh, of course, with, uh, uh, with the hard work of the whole entire country. So a lot of co uh, companies nowadays are very uh, hands-on with regards to making information accessible, right? So uh, obviously it was done, uh, there was a vast, uh, a vast improvement with regards to uh, accessibility in terms of, uh, you know, services, uh, sites, and other stuff in the past, uh, uh, you know, 20 years. So it's been a collective effort of all the previous governments and uh, mostly the, the MMD and the PF, because this is when technology in Africa started booming as well. So, uh, you know, it's been a cumulative effort uh, for the, from the previous governments, if I can put it that way. Okay, but I, I, I really like the way Zambia is looking. There's shopping malls. In even the roads, they are looking good. Right, right. And I think the, the Zambian people are not giving Lungu enough credit. They they wanted him out. Don't you think there's just a little bit of pushing the man out without giving him a bit of credit for what he did? Uh, well, uh, President Lungu, just like any other presidents, have uh, had positive contributions uh, to the nation because you just can't have uh, a situation where uh, everything is negative uh, about a person. Because in Zambia, we've got a saying uh, that really goes like, uh, that just simply means a person can't be entirely bad. Of course, he's had uh, positive influences uh, in different sectors, such as the the fish industry. He set up a lot of uh, fisheries. Uh, he got to like, uh, you know, uh, put in a lot of infrastructure with regards to making sure that Zambia uh, really develops in this particular sector. Of course, when you talk about roads, right, this is uh, one of those topics that uh, you have to sort of uh, really analyze in terms of, uh, you know, infrastructure development, because by the end of it all, it's uh, Zambia as uh, Zambian people's money, which is working. And due to the fact that uh, building these roads were obviously coming uh, with a lot of uh, other uh, extended expenses as well. We had a lot of debt. Of course, if previous governments were able to accumulate huge amounts of debt, they would have also done a lot as well. But you also have to remember that uh, these roads 
uh, are going to be needed to be maintained. But of course, with regards to trade and uh, sort of uh, making transportation easy, he's done a very recommendable job. We've given him that. But this really comes at a very huge cost because if you look at the contracts, the people who were awarded these uh, types of uh, contracts and the expenses, it was very, very you know, unfair. And uh, there was a lot of uh, cost and it was expensive as well. So, uh, you know, those are the factors that we can get to look at. Uh, but with regards to, you know, the general perspective of Zambians, right? One of the things that the Zambian people really hated about the PFRU is uh, Kadarism. Kadarism in Zambia became, uh, you know, a disease. We had uh, situations where the police you know, the army weren't really as, uh, you know, highly respected due to the fact that if you've got, uh, you know, membership to the patriotic front, you can get away with everything. We had situations where, you know, police officers were fearing cadres and cadres had more power because cadres had infiltrated the system and uh, they were amassing a whole lot of wealth. And this is one of the reasons why when uh, President Hitchlema came into power, right, the first thing that he did was cut the Kada fraternity off. And uh, obviously the, the Kadas were choking uh, Zambia's GDP due to the fact that they were withholding revenue, which was uh, uh, you know, supposed to be collected by, for example, the Lusaka City Council and all these city councils in different provinces, right? They were sort of uh, uh, you know, getting that revenue. And when that happens, Zambia Revenue Authority is not really going to uh, collect a lot of tax there. Therefore, the GDP of Zambia is also going to decline. So this is one of the reasons why the local traders, you know, pe business people, entrepreneurs, they were basically, you know, uh, voiceless because the cadres were just taking uh, everything over and they, they acquired a lot of wealth, you know. So obviously this is something that didn't really sit well with Zambians because Zambians really felt neglected and powerless. And the other thing is President Lungu didn't really sort of uh, get to drop the hammer and end Kadarism. There's even a statement that really, uh, that he personally said that uh, he can't really do our well with the Kadas. And this is something that a lot of Zambians were really, really uh, upset and ag uh, angry with him because the Kadas were destroying the nation and they were destroying the reputation of the PF as well. So one of the biggest reasons why the Patriotic Front lost was due to the fact that the Kadas infiltrated the system. The people felt, uh, you know, not, not protected because why are you going to report uh you know if the the police the police are fearing the cadres so you know uh, i think that's the 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 most important fact that really made lungu lose these particular elections because you know the cadres just became ex extra wealthy they were unruly and the people of zambia really felt neglected and forsaken and zambians were slowly begin to beginning to lose their freedom you know so yeah, those are the factors that really affected his legacy. However, we do appreciate him for all the positive influences he's had on Zambia. And uh, we are so proud uh, of uh, the positive influences. Okay, Muna, I'm so happy to have talked to you today. And you're always welcome to come back. And I would like us to talk in the near future, after the cabinet is announced. I know you're going to have a lot to say about uh, the ministers when they're all there. Yes, Is there sir. anything else you want to say before we close? Um, well, you know, I just want to have uh, this dialogue uh, continue all over Southern Africa. And I really want us, uh, you know, to all collectively progress because, you know, countries like Zambia are landlocked. So the welfare of Zimbabwe uh, and the rest of the region is also going to affect our growth. So we need the whole entire region to uh, progress economically and also do very well uh, as well in all the other sectors as well. So I just want us as uh, Africans to work uh, with one another to support each other and, uh, you know, do what is best for, you know, our continent and uh, just collectively progress. So thank you to your audience for being with us. And uh, I really hope that uh, I was able to do a good job. And I'm looking forward to having more conversations with you. And uh, we've got a lot of ideas, you know, the youths in Zambia and the youths all over Africa, 
we just want to be given the platform so that we can sort of uh, uh, share the amazing, uh, you know, business opportunities and the creativity that we can bring about with regards to economic emancipation, because this is the next step for Africa. Africa needs to economically have its own footing. So we can only do this if, uh, you know, our region is progressing uh, and uh, we, we've got the right leadership because everything starts and ends with leadership. So uh, I can say a lot of things, but I'm just so happy that we are having these uh, interactive platforms where we can get to learn from one another. Thank you very much, Mona. And I'm going to be encouraging people to come and follow Z Corner. Is that a Facebook page? Is that a yes. Twitter account? Uh, that's uh, Facebook. We uh, we have a Facebook page. It's uh, Z Corner. That's uh, Z E D C O R N E R. So basically, just uh, you can find us on Facebook. Just type Z Corner, uh, and you'll be able to like uh, see our updates and uh, everything that we're going to be up to. Yeah, the the only YouTuber I knew in Zambia was uh, Lily Muntamzi. You know her? Yes. Uh, she's she's a great. Uh, you know. Uh, friend of mine she's a colleague she's somebody that I look up to and uh, I was actually talking to her not a very long time ago you know because uh, we were working on some stuff so uh, she's a very great and strong courageous woman so I'm so proud of her uh, unfortunately she didn't uh, end up uh, winning the the you know the seat that she was contesting uh, on because it was a very tough uh, you know, constituency to sort of uh, stand in because they were heavy hitters. And Munali is one of the most competitive, uh, uh, you know, uh, constituencies out there. And uh, obviously due to the fact that people were gravitating towards uh, the UPND, uh, this is one of the reasons why people were just on, by default uh, choosing any U UPND candidate. And unfortunately she was uh, independent. She was standing as an uh, independent member of parliament. So obviously she didn't really get to win. But regardless of that, she's very popular on the ground, she's very popular with the uh, uh, Munali uh, residents, and uh, I really believe she's going to bounce back heavily because uh, you know she's a very strong, courageous woman, and she's got a very bright future. And right now, uh, the vice president is uh, you know talking about the fact that a lot of Zambian women weren't able to participate in you know these uh, roles and other stuff. So obviously, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming for. Honorable Lydian Muntambu, and I, I strongly believe she's she's got the heart and she's going to, you know, come out victorious regardless of the loss. So I'm really super proud of her. Thank you very much, Muna, and we'll talk to you again very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a great evening. Goodbye, viewers, and uh, be blessed. Kuno, Aho, Pano, 